again everybody today I'm working on some of the uh, fuel delivery for the gas fire now what this is is a throttle body from a Lumina uh, 3100 engine so it is just the butterfly valve that controls the airflow into the intake panel which allows the engine to breathe okay so I took this off and I have actually plugged up there is a idler control valve here and I've actually ran that all the way out and actually put a piece of plastic over the hole and then screwed everything down so the idle air control which is what allows air to go from this side of the butterfly valve to this side and it's adjustable so like uh, in your fuel injected car when it idles up in the morning uh, before it actually gets warmed up it idles up for a few minutes and then it will slowly idle down it's not moving these throttle plates it's moving this idle air control valve and letting air bypass the, the uh, butterfly valve but we don't want this to do that because this is going to regulate our wood gas so I plugged that up so now it is just a valve and I've got another one it's already mounted um, but what I had to do as you can see there is no way to mount like a two inch pipe or anything else on this side because it bolts on normally it bolts on to the uh, intake plenum just like that you know and it's got a plate here that it bolts to well we don't want that we want to be able to put a two inch pipe into it so what i did is i took a uh, 55 gallon drum lid that had the bung on top with a two inch uh fitting where you could screw a two inch pipe into it now i took that bolted it to it cut out around the throttle body so that i made an attachment point for a two inch connector to screw into so that way we have our way to get our two inch into it now on the other side I took the actual O ring you can see this is oval shaped instead of circular but I took a three inch it's a Fernco fitting that has the hose clamp around it you know like the hose clamp like this they wrap around it fitting like this only it goes from two inch to three inch and the three inch fit over this and I could take and just tighten it up and it worked fine and that way I have the ability to hook into a two inch pipe because I want to leave it to where I could take a couple screws out and just pull the whole thing out to service it or whatever but let me show you what I've got and where I'm kind of stalled out today until I guess I got to go get me a drill. But anyway, let me show you what I got so far. Okay, here's the underhood part of it. And what I've used is this is the original piece. Um, you can see by the shape of the, the fan shroud, you have to actually have a specially shaped piece to come out of here and go that way. So I just used the factory piece. I cut it off. This hole goes nowhere. That it dead ends right here. There is no way to get air from here into the intake. So this doesn't do anything. So this is not a problem. Uh, but I had to cut that off. Um, actually, this is the other piece that used to go on over but I of course needed to add some stuff so before I cut this I looked online and I can get a cold air intake for this which is what I'm going to end up having to use the uh, filter from anyway or a type of cone filter but I can get a cold air intake pretty cheap for this so it's not really too big of a deal to cut that up so now I have a three inch connector here uh, because this is three inch going into, that's got a huge throttle body on it. 
uh, three inch throttle body. So um, I had uh, I wanted to maintain that flow rate. Actually, I did try a two inch, and I had this that I could slip over this. So I had a two inch pipe running through, and I took it for a drive. Uh, I still had, of course, you have to have this hooked up. This is your mass airflow sensor. It tells the engine how much air is being drawn through the engine so it can do the fuel injector magic. So I had to have this sensor working or it would not run. So um, I ran this and I just went straight over and straight into this and straight into the factory air filter, which is gone now. But that did not work on like heavy, like hard climbs and stuff going up hills. It would lose power. I guess it didn't have enough flow through a two inch. So I went back with a three inch. So we'll get rid of this. And what I did, I heated this all up with a torch because it was kind of an odd shape. And I ended up when I cinched it down with a hose clamp I had to double them up you can see but when i cinched it up with a hose clamp i ended up with a little tear right here that i had to fill in with silicone and of course i put my three inch pipe back in here that goes into this which is also a t going off to a two inch and what's on the two inch this is which I removed the spring. You can see there's no spring in here now. So this moves freely. So my cable, when I run it out here, will be able to move very freely. I won't have such resistance. And now where I needed a three inch valve, butterfly valve or whatever it was, on this part, I used a gate valve. And that should give me the adjustment that I need I need to work it a little more because it it's it's a little old so it needs to be worked a little more but that will give me my adjustment that I need and I have an idea of how I'm going to run this uh, the air adjustment may not be with a cable I don't know yet for sure but I'm thinking I'll make a little uh, small linear actuator that can push this in and out and I can control the air with a knob that way uh so i don't think the cable is going to have the length really to because it's got to go that far i don't think the cable is going to have that much length to uh open and close that so that way i can close my air valve off to adjust it for however much i need and i can adjust my gas flow right here and like I said, I do need to get a cone type filter to go in this area. So I have my, well, essentially it's going to be a hot air intake because it's going to be drawing air in here. I may try to block off some of the hot air from over here or something, but that's, that's you know, down the road a little bit right now. I'm just trying to concentrate on getting it running on wood gas, running on wood gas. Now, the wood gas line... I'm trying just one because with this engine compartment, it's pretty tight and it's going to be kind of hard to get two lines up here. So I'm going to try with just one. And I don't know if you can see that PVC line way down there. Probably can't. But there's a PVC line that comes up right there. I'm going to have to 90 that, bring it up through this hole and up into here. And that will be for my wood gas. Now for a uh, pressure release, I'm going to have to figure something else out. But for right now, I've got, this is my 3 inch to 2 inch fern coal that I was talking about that I used on the throttle body. So this is not super tight. So if there is a flashback, that and also this one is not super tight either that is our pressure relief for right now now i'm thinking maybe if i put uh some type of pressure relief on this back here 
I'm not sure exactly what to do with that yet, but I'm doing one thing at a time, trying to get everything hooked up so I can see how it's going to run. Uh, for now, like I said, I'm just leaving it so that it can blow that line off if it has a puff back, and it can blow this line off. And these are good and tight. I don't want it to blow this off. Uh, this is a pretty sensitive part. And I'm hoping that since I have left this loose, and I may even leave the uh, leave this one a little bit loose, I'm hoping that will be enough that if there is a flashback, it can poof out and just not hurt anything. Especially this. That's a very delicate piece. Now, okay. Next, I was in the process of running the gas lines from the back. I uh, already got the one underneath there, ran, I had to heat it up and bend it around everything. But in the back, okay, in the back, back here, I have, that's my filter, the top part of my filter. Uh, that may change, which it'll be very easy to change it out if I need to, because all I gotta do is take it loose here, and take that line loose, and I can put a bigger barrel in here. Uh, but for right now, I'm using what I have, and since it's going to be pretty easy to change out, I'll just change it later. But I started drilling a hole right there, and I'm going to have to insulate this really well because I'm going to have PVC close to where this is. So uh, I'm not going to run that line back here or over close to this at all. I'm going to run it probably, I'll probably clock it back this way run it straight down and then I'll 90 over that way and then 90 over that way and then 90 down through the hole uh, because I want to keep all of the plastic away from this that I can well not so much this but this pipe and the bottom of that is going to get hot I already have a piece of metal through around it but I'm going to have actual insulation but I started drilling my hole and I have a problem Let me show you my problem. This is my Hitachi drill. I've had this forever. This has been in my videos forever. It's drilled a lot of holes. And uh, it's kind of had a rough life. But you can see, I mean, it's not really doing the, the, the thing that a drill, like, this won't drill like that. It makes noise, but it doesn't do the drill thing. So, I'm going to have to get me another drill. So, all right. I guess I'm kind of stalled out now. i got a couple more things. Like always, i got a couple more things to get. <laughs> Every time. But, I think I'm getting closer. I think if I would have had the ability to have ran that line up to the front, then the system would have been sealed up enough. Uh, I could have threw my little uh, container over here on the hopper drain. And I might have been able to actually fire this thing up. But it looks like, well, that's not going to happen now. <laughs> that's kind of looking forward to that. But anyway, I've got a couple more things i got to get. And then maybe pretty soon we will be trying this truck out on wood gas. I can't wait myself. I don't know about y'all. I can't wait. I'm ready to take this thing for a spin on wood gas with no gasoline. Or maybe hybrid driving. I don't know. I'm just anxious to see it working. Anyway, I guess that's going to be about it for this video. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one.